Okay, my fellow blaster enthusiasts, we've got two quarts of clean water. Um, I'm gonna put that in here, five gallon bucket. You'll see how much this makes. I'm using my dust mask when I'm mixing. And here we go. Come on over. Two quart usually takes around a third of a bag. Maybe a little more. Maybe a little less. Oh, a little mountain in there. Okay, I need more plaster, but I'll get that mixed the way just mixed. So you don't want to mix it for more than about two minutes. I've probably done a little bit more before, but... At this stage, you want to put in big amounts, because it's very liquid. much too liquid. This can even stay in there sometimes. Imperial base coat USG brand. That's looking good. It's even a little too thick. Add a little bit more water. I want to add just little bits of water at a time at this stage. It's very easy to go back to too runny and end up with way too much plaster. pretty good. Now we're getting nice peaks here. It all holds up. That's when we know it's pretty good. Okay, right, I'm gonna get rid of the excess off the paddle. And now we're gonna immediately start the washing paddle process. This is my dirty bucket. And then I'm going to ask Paul, my trusty buddy, to clean that while I start shoveling hot mud. Paul, come on in. Got a pile for you to clean. And here we go, up river. <laughs> now, so that we can continue cleaning after the paddle's done, Paul can get right on to cleaning the bucket while it's nice and wet. The bucket seems to be hard and crusty often. I've got a plaster table in the middle here. Mine's metal because I had a scrap piece of metal this big. You can use wood, maybe something with a slick surface would be better for mica. A marine ply. These are all things. So we got all that on the table here. I think I probably mixed a little bit too much for the pack to do it. But that's okay. I shouldn't say patch. Not patch, but a section of the wall. Of course, feed this up. Cleaning. 
I'm gonna get my hawk, get my cool trowel. I'm just gonna start applying. When it's wet like this, when it is most um, liquid form, I'm gonna see the consistency I want just by, I want to kind of hold up there. It'll still slide off a little bit, but it's too wet if it's just sliding back on, off your trowel onto the hawk. At this stage, I'm gonna set my alarm for 30 minutes. Set timer for 30 minutes, starting now. Set timer for 30 minutes, starting. And we're gonna start here. Come on over. While it's wet, surface area. That's the big flat open surfaces. Because when it's a little harder, the open areas are harder. And when it's cured a little more, the corners are a little easier. I'm starting in the corner here and working my way that way so that this material hardens up a little bit when I come back to do this corner later. So I'm not making big dents in that, I can, I can get a nice corner. You're going to come with, up with a lot of different ways to start here so that over there is a little harder when you're doing this or that. It's worth thinking about before you've got hot mud. We had all clean tools before we mix the mud. Get a little more. Right now we're just getting it on at a relatively even thickness. We're not worried about big ridge marks. We're getting it about an inch away from the edges so that when we go back to do our edging, it's an easy marry up from the med from the edge down to what's already applied. This is a totally different scenario than doing a big wall. There's a lot of edging and not a lot of flat surfaces. The good news is we're going to be able to do this whole section in one batch. If you're not able to, You can always do a break in the line. Mix up a new batch. Try to get some of the material you left there before it dries fully. If it dries a little too much. Add a little water, spray it. But you know, very patchy here, and that's okay. We're gonna come back later once it's cured and give it the big smooth. You can do one smooth at this stage and fill little holes, but it's important not to obsess on one area right now. It's important to just keep putting material on the wall while it's malleable. A big chunk. Oh. We're gonna lose some. We're gonna win some. Don't be afraid to use the whole width of your trowel.
We're going for about an eighth inch thickness. Now that we're getting to the edge here, I'm going to start bringing it right up to the, well, let me get this last flip flat section and I'll show you how I do my edges. So for edging, you want to use as much of the flat surface as possible so you're not going back and forth and you can keep moving along. So you place it a little bit before the crack. I got a little close there, see? I don't want that bubbling out and over, so I'm going to try to pull that back. So place it out here, and then start screwing this up. Let me do that one again. Get yourself a long flat piece on there. See where it is. Line it up where it needs to be. Start out from the edge a little bit and then press inwards. Almost looking pretty good. You just get that on, not too, not worried about too much being the same thickness yet. I'm gonna come back with my square trowel and run down there after I've done that everywhere. And once it's a little harder, and that'll really make it a nice clean, even application. I'm gonna keep using my pull trowel while I've got it going to do all the edges around like this, leaving the corners. For when I come back to do the detail works with my square trail. You're never really flat on the wall with the trowel. You're always at an angle. You're pushing a little and then pushing less when you pull away. I think when you push, you want it to expand out and fill the areas around the trowel. And so I'm pushing back here and I'm kind of pushing and guiding it up to the wall and then filling it off. If you go too flat, you can create suction. Screw up your area, but that's all just some practice. 